Hi, good morning. Actually, some buses haven't come yet, is it? See, it's good to see that the energy is building up. And it's because of you are conveying that energy. So, whatever you're doing, you need to also, importantly, bring it to the notice of everyone. Because everybody is not attending all the functions. Everybody is not attending the lesser the Pivot 2 or the earlier the small children function, the functions of the sports, everybody didn't attend. So whatever messages you get through the emails that your child is talking about, each one of you also must be getting it. When you get it, please send it all to me, to Shardaman, with a copy to your coordinators and the head, and Arushi and the Puja, that is the web team. With that, we should let people know. Basically what is happening is you're doing a lot of things, but it is not known. So, mommy does a lot of things at home. But if it is not known to the people, children just take it as accepted. Part of the task. It is not so. So it's very important that you should, it is not anything else, you're not kind to, uh, kind of trying to sell the information, but you're going to bring about an awareness of the information. That is called being conscious. Being conscious of the strength, being conscious of the good points of the children of various groups and all these groups put together make the school. You heard the word of school of fish, all the fish together. So that's a school. So, school of fish in which there is a particular pro property you will notice the school of fish does not contain varieties of fish. It's going to be one group of fish. So similarly, school of fish from Victoria, if we may say so, are the Victoria's kids. And you're trying to bring about that in which letting the communication through whenever you meet people, you ask them. Whenever you have the information, send it to people and send it. I sincerely mean that you should not be lethargic about it and you should send it. It will only bring up your, make your task much easier and better and faster because it is not. If it is not, that if you have to go to Mumbai, the Mumbai Expressway is a better route, so everybody knows about it. They don't have to start searching which is the one and ask wasteful conversations. Now in which, notice what we are talking about is communicating, is talking about it. Many of us tend to just stay silent and think that it is understood. And you also say, can't you see the amount of work we are doing and nobody is appreciating, nobody is speaking anything about it. Is it because you are not talking about it? Talking doesn't mean bragging. Talking doesn't mean advertisement. Talking just means it is so. Like, I don't tell lies. Speaking truth is a good thing. Talking about it is reinforcing the habit of telling truth, purity, being kind, being caring. These are all the communications. So, letting people know, children know, talk to the children, tell them this is what you did. This was very nice. In which, I would also like you to take on right from the childhood, being able to speak 
extempore. Meaning, being able to talk about the thing. It doesn't matter if it is hesitant, faulting, that's a piva to do. They were doing, some of them were doing pretty well on their own, some of them were reading it out. It's okay if somebody has got a reference paper in front of them and reading it, it's not a problem. But at the same time, the same person could be guided that to speak like the other kids, what happens is it develops in them a sense of self-esteem. I'm good. I'm okay. I can handle it. Have you noticed? In the communication, there are many types of communication, primarily two, verbal and non-verbal. You'd be surprised as a teacher, as a parent, as a friend, as a colleague, you are all the time communicating. You are. You don't realize it, maybe. In the classroom, in your family, outside in the corridor, you are speaking. You are speaking all the time, without even speaking. Supposing you are too busy, you are running to, let's say, the head of the team or the coordinator has called you, or Shadumam has called you and you are running, and some children say, Hi ma'am! And either you are too preoccupied not to say anything, or you have said something, you just said, hi, and that's a very matter of fact, hi. All you have to do, become aware. Aware of what? Everything around you. Become conscious. Otherwise, you'll go off to sleep. Meaning, your talents will go off to sleep, not you physically, and that will stay hidden. Same is with the kids. They have suddenly noticed, oh, teacher didn't say hi to me. You may not realize it, but these things create a tremendous impression. I still remember what my teacher used to do in first grade, second grade, fifth grade. I remember each one of those. And I'm nothing special, I'm like every one of us. So everything that you do in this verbal, non-verbal communication, you'll be amazed to see that the words that you use, let's say you want to ask a question. Somebody has walked in late. Supposing you ask the question, just notice the choice of word. Supposing you say, why are you late? You know what it means? You're challenging that person. And now it depends on what was the tone of your voice. If the tone was, why are you late? That's another tone. Another one, with a smile, why are you late? Using of wrong words, but appropriately. Same thing, you can ask by using different words. Think of it. Be careful of the appropriation choice of words. You could say, hey, what happened? What made you come late today? What made you come late today? That means it is not you. It's something else on the way. You're a good guy. You're a good girl. What made you come late today? You could say the same thing in other way. You say, how come? You're always on time. What happened today? Can you understand? So what you have to be is very careful in how you use the intonations and the choice of words. Let's say the word field. You can say, use the word differently. Like you say, the harvest in the corn field has been pretty good this time. Good season for country. You can also say, I would like your field of visions to improve so that you are aware of everyone and everything happening in the class. You could also say, the field that you're going to choose 
would make a lot of difference and you need to start working on similar field right now. Now, where are you using which word? You teachers, as parents, you and I need to continuously improve our vocabulary. Continues to work at it. You remember the earlier days, Reader's Digest used to be very popular? It has gone up the market now. But it is to have those games. It doesn't matter, you got your now beautiful gadget called mobile. You can do anything with it now. There are some very nice apps for the words and dictionary. You could go ahead, when you're writing an email, you're writing a paper, you're writing a message in WhatsApp. You can check it out, called Thesaurus, synonym and antonym. And let's say you are using the word, same word, feed. And now what you do, go to the feed and check what are the appropriate words and what is the meaning that you are wanting to say. Look at them, which is the one which is most appropriate for this, why am I creating this document or the message. So what it means that you have to be careful in the choice of words. You'll be surprised in a circle of 100 percentage wise it's just about 5 to 6 percent is conveyed but it still conveys by the choice of words. Another about 30 percent is conveying in your classroom to your children, to your parents, to your friends, to your colleagues by how you talk, by the methodology. You could be very business-like, you could be also very caring, very loving and that's why we keep telling as a teacher you must keep smiling all the time. You should be aware. Are we aware? Supposing you see that some people who are with you in the classroom or the people around that you're addressing are not aware. Play some game. That means what? You're conscious of the people attending. Think about something. Make a change. If you find everybody is not with it, and it's not difficult. You have to just only think of it. What all games am I going to play today? Thank God it's Monday, no? So on Sunday you should be thinking, hey, what am I going to do? Something. Just like while going back home, you think about, no, what am I going to do today? Whether it is cooking or saying hello or work or project or whatever it is. You're thinking. That's about in which your attitude, the way you are delivering is very, very important. Your kindness, your love, your caring, your being aware of everyone in the classroom and the people around you, maybe you just too. Communication as per the Western definition, it requires two people. Somebody has to listen, somebody has to speak. The other person speaks, you listen. The communication is a two-way as per the Vedal, as per the Western. In the Vedal thing, it is not so. In the Vedal thing, you can say it's a two-person, but it's not really. It is you and your own self. And that's called meditation. What you're doing in meditation is called Swadhyaya. You're studying yourself and talking to yourself. It's also what is called prayer. Prayer is you're praying to yourself to your God. God is up there or God is up here? Very well. In this communication, when there are two people or more, know that if you, let's say, make children in the classroom feel good about themselves, that is called development of self-esteem. If you keep criticizing, like we used to be in our school days, more or less majority of us had teachers who only criticized, who only found where did he score how much marks and 
it was just so communication went in particularly in all around also today you have to be very careful as if it is deliverance of some information data they are teaching a topic and you talk about that which is being an IB, being in Vedantic, it is lesser and lesser. But you have to be very careful. It's not just giving information. It is how you give that information. That is very important. And you'll be amazed to hear about 70 to 75 percent of the communication is with your body language. So your body language if you're not speaking any word, you're not saying anything, not choosing anything, but your body language is good, or somebody comes and shows you something, ma'am, I've done it on Sunday, you have to just smile, and you have to just nod your head. It's simple body language. The child has already received the appreciation from you. All you could do with your body language, just put your hand on the back and say, wow, very nice. Self-esteem goes up. Hey, I can do it. And you have to be careful. Generally, people tend to choose some people, some children, who are that goody-goody type and who is, you like them because, because they like you and you like them. They know how to be charming and steal your affection. But even those who don't, who are tending to be still and quiet, maybe you need to pay more attention to them. And sometimes everybody together being still, being silent, and then asking somebody else coming up and saying, while we were silent, what did you think? You may even tell them, we are going to sit still for a minute and after that I am going to ask you, tell me what did you think of? So you are preparing them beforehand and they are going ahead. Your body language is of extreme importance. So there is an advice for everyone that You may have had a terrible day or in the morning before you come to your work but you have to learn to switch it off. You know like you go at home and it's a dark room, possibly you are walking in, you are the only person. You first press the light switch you know? and now you are on. This is a very important part of all the time that we're doing is communication, communication, communication. Don't allow negativity to come into it. And the second thing about your communication is I, so the moment you say I, I'm different and everybody else is outside of me. You have to bring that I and you into we are together. We are one. We are not different. See, you notice in the world around us, there is tremendous amount of suffering. Suffering, suffering. Everybody is suffering. You think about, and I am not suffering. You may be suffering. If you see that, what did Buddha say? Everything is impermanent. It is not there. What does it mean? Anityam, anityam, anityam. Sarva Anitya. Everything is not permanent. We don't know when will it go away. Second thing he says, it's only momentary. Mumukshatya. Mumukshatya. Sarva Mumukshatya. So in this world, when it is so, he goes on to add, Duksham Duksham Sarvam Duksham. Now you want to make this joyful. How do you make it now? Why are people suffering? So somebody asked Paramahansa Ramakrishna, his birthday was 8th of March, just the other day, last Friday. A devotee was asking, why are we all suffering? Why is it? There's so much of suffering in the world. Everybody is suffering. 
So he took a line and he tried to say, yes, they are, but it is as for their own work, what they have done in the past, they have to face it, but you can change it. He said, no, 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 but this doesn't change. It is not. It is not fair. So then Paramahamsa Ramakrishna said that it is actually God's play. He said, what is this? God is having fun by playing. Play is fun, no? Fun and freedom makes play. Remember two things, fun and freedom. There only is play. You want to play something, but the child wants to play something else, that's not play. You want to play something, but your partner wants to do something else, that's not play. It should be fun and freedom, freedom to choose. He said, God is having fun and God is having freedom and we are the ones suffering and dying away and sickness and disease and poverty. What is this? So, Param Shadam Krishna used only one word, uh, two words rather, in one expression and he said, he just looked into him somberly, this time with a little calmer tone and he said in Bengali, Tumi ke. In Bengali it means, who are you? And if you realize this, that who are they, these children, the people that you communicate and who am I? And this is at one, then there is a difference. That's it. What happens? You have heard about a little bit of Vedantic talks of earlier. Remember? The Drashta and the Drishya. Seer and the seen. Knower and the knowables. Known and knower. All this. The moment you start to realize, I am not this body, this mind, this ego. I am something else. The moment you start to realize that, you are like a Hollywood film, Bollywood film. What is it? You're watching the film now. You are the drashta, you are the seer, you are the knower. You are watching the film. In the film, there is killing, there are masses, there are destructions, there are poverty, there are people hitting each other, there are tremendous amount of natural disasters, there are earthquakes and fire and the volcanoes and the tsunami and everything else is happening. Have you noticed something? There are love scenes and everything else, but all put together, around with the sufferings, you can't leave the TV screen. You still have fun. Why? You're watching. Some ghost is coming in and there is sound coming in and you're doing like that and you don't want to. Don't wait, don't talk to me. Wait, wait. Something is going to happen. You still enjoy. You don't like the ghost story. You want a lovey-dovey story or you want a philosophical story. Whatever it is, you're enjoying. What is that? You're the drashta. You're the knower. You see. You're the seer. The moment you see your life like this, the moment you see your people, the, the students, your vision changes. And then, you are in eternal bliss. You are always joyful. The moment the other things come up and try to influence you, you say, hey, you are just the seer. You are the witness. So what happens then? You become Buddha. You say, hey, come on. Buddha takes so much of time, so... Yes. So somebody asked Paramahamsa Yogananda, would you please pray my son is not well? And they tried everything. Nothing is happening. Would you please pray? He said, sure I will. Why aren't you praying? Hey, my prayers don't work. So he said, do you know something? I also started like you. When my prayer didn't work. But I didn't give up. Have you noticed? Children never lose. Have you realized it? They always win. There's a guy, dad, mom, come back, weekday, tired, gone up to sleep. Child had come back from school, cold wind made him go up to sleep in the bus. Mommy picked up, child is sleeping or maybe the maid and put him in the bed, he's sleeping. 
Now everybody else, dinner time, 8 o'clock, come on, get up, dinner time. Now he's got it. But he's fresh. She's fresh now. After dinner, don't feel like sleeping. Mommy and daddy's dog tired, they want to go up to sleep. He said, come on, go up to sleep. So eventually, because the father being dead, he does lie down next. But he's not sleeping. Little later, that water, I want a glass of water. I said, okay. He that goes up and drinks a glass of water. He's not thirsty. He just can't sleep. So he takes one sip and he said, bus. Papa puts it on the side, next to the bedside. Little later, Papa, what? I want some water. So he extends his hand, picks up the glass. Not that water. I want cold water. Papa said, okay. Papa gets up, goes to the fridge, opens some water, gives it to him. He again sips and he puts it. Bus. Papa is noticing it and getting irritated now. Little later again. Papa I said, What? If you ask me for water, just watch. I'm going to bring a belt for you now. What does the child say? Papa, when you bring the belt, will you bring me a glass of water? <laughs> Children never lose. What is it? Persistence. So what did Buddha do? What did Paramahamsas do? They persisted. Start today. Very simple. Persevere. In your classroom. Think about your communication with. Things to do with. Always telling a story works like a miracle. Just now on this side, there were three gentlemen. They're all gentlemen. They were looking somewhere else. They were thinking of something else. I noticed it. So what did I do? I told a story. And you know what? I will not tell them who they are. I will not tell you either. But they are full of attention. So bring a change in your in the classroom. Like Shadman keeps telling. If you find Change the scenario, change the class. Make your class so attractive. You know the basic principles of the BYP with graduates to MYP and the VP. Your class should be alive. Whichever class, even the senior university classes, generally you walk in to a blank wall with a screen and maybe a clean computer. Hey, make the class so very attractive. You've seen about, heard about mind mapping. You've seen in this school. Start utilizing it. You will be excited yourself to make a different mind map. What about what? Anything. Talk about anything. Let's say you're talking about telling truth. Why don't you put in the center truth and make the mind map? Why should we do it? You'll find yourself very attractive. You'll feel like putting your mind into it. We have got the mind map software for the school. It's very expensive. So, Wasim and Irfan sir is giving it to, I think about six computers, which one and all identify. Start using it. You want to write a story. You want to write an essay. You want to attack a topic about how to teach, let's say, anything. Go on to through the mind map. What is there? It's different. No? You remember? Long, long time ago. I don't know. You must have seen it. It's not very long. Maggie sauce. All it came out with an advertisement. It's different. Have you noticed? The Nike shoe. Even today. They're using it for now 20-30 years. Just written. Do it. And notice, even I don't forget. You look at, everybody watches film, you remember some of it, some of it you don't. But have you forgotten ever, Aati hai kya khandala? <laughs> Competency is the worst. Don't let it come. Let keep on, say I have to do even better and even better.
Thank you very much. Shadowman, thank you with you for your all your team work.